So this is part two of the video blog that I began last night um, and I, sh I, I meant to carry on straight away and go into this but time got away from me and it was really late when I put the last video up so here I am continuing that today. Um, and today rather than, than talking about discontinuation syndrome per se, it's, it's more about a stepping stone where we're going to talk about neuroscience and, and neuropsychopharmacology basics so when we go on to discuss the theory we've got the groundwork in place and we can understand um, what up regulation is what down regulation is and how, how neurons are communicating with each other um, so really sorry that I don't have anything more advanced than my own drawings to offer you but but we're gonna have a look at um, a serotonin neuron and we have billions of neurons in the brain each neuron um, is specific to a transmitter or a system and when we're looking at the serotonin system which runs in one direct pathway so which begins at the dorsal rack nuclei in the brain stem and it runs in one pathway right around the brain to the prefrontal cortex innovating and many, many other pathways, including all of the five dopamine pathways that run through the brain. So this is a serotonin neuron, and it's made up of a cell body, a, a nucleus, uh, dendrites and dendritic branches coming off here. This is the axon itself, so almost like the, the wire that the, the electronic signals are being sent down and each of these sections here are, are myelin sheath which are like a fatty um, amiga basically which protects the axon and in, in um, conditions like multiple sclerosis that is caused by the breakdown of, of the myelin sheath so the axon is exposed and now it does contain Schwann cells inside whose job it is to remyelinate that axon but if it breaks down too many times the the neuron will die and a lesion will be formed in the brain which when seen on brain scans is indicative of something like MS and then we have axon terminals so in this scenario this is a presynaptic neuron and this is our postsynaptic neuron and it's a communicating one serotonin neuron to the next. So we're gonna we're gonna close up in in this square here. And I know that many many people who've taken an SSRI understand the synapse and how it how it works. And certainly lots of people, ninety nine percent of people with uh, discontinuation syndrome, have looked at a synapse before and and understood. But so we're all on the same page. I am going to, I'm going to go into it again. So here is a neuron, a synapse, and this is our presynaptic neuron who is communicating with the postsynaptic neuron. Now on the axon terminal here we have vessels, so stored inside the sending neuron are um, are are transmitters and, and in this case serotonin which has been converted from tryptophan and and now stored in these vessels also inside here we have MAOA and MAOB uh, monoamine oxidase A will break down um, serotonin that's left outside the vessels it, it's a protein it will go in it will degrade that uh, MAOB it does the same but it also degrades dopamine Around the outside here, we have CERT in, in blue, and that's another protein. And of course, we all know that SSRIs are CERT inhibitors. So it's CERT's job that when serotonin is released, CERT proteins will move in. It will collect the serotonin in the synapse. It will bring it back into the axon and store it once again into the vessels ready for the next Action, action potential to come down and release to happen again. And this happens many, many, many times. 
and we have more MAO A and B. So I mean the difference with these proteins is that CERT brings it brings the serotonin back into the neuron and MAO A and B will break it down because there's there's new stuff being created all the time. So in a healthy brain, in a brain that has been untouched by any kind of drugs, um, action potential comes down serotonin released into the synapse. It attaches to the various receptors here on the postsynaptic side of the synapse. And there will be um, you know, all, the, all the serotonin receptors there, all the big players, um, 1A, 1B. B, uh, 2A, 2C, 3, 7, 6 and the serotonin will come down and fit like a lock in a key and it will trigger an action potential on this neuron and the message will go down and on it goes right through that pathway. So in a brain now that is taking an SSRI um, The CERT proteins are now inhibited. So when serotonin is released into the synapse, CERT cannot come in and pick up the serotonin and take it back into the axon. It's left to continue to activate and stimulate all of the postsynaptic receptors repeatedly. And that is, is um, why you get a range of side up side effects and start-up effects when you first start an SSRI. You know, people talk about why it takes two weeks to six months for an SSRI to kick in or to work. And it's my um, view that this happens when postsynaptic receptors downregulate. So you take an SSRI and CERT's inhibited so suddenly we have, we have absolutely masses of serotonin repeatedly stimulating these receptors. And because we know the brain adapts and the brain, I, I will maintain this throughout, that uh, we are playing a game of chess with our brain. It's moves and counter moves. And you make one move, the brain adapts. It counters that move. And it's something you have to consider in every aspect of this because you may think, well, I will... If, if my problem is too much serotonin, I'll just, you know, take something that, that reduces serotonin. But you will get compensatory upregulation by the brain because we're playing chess. So you're on an SSRI, you're being repeatedly stimulated postsynaptically, and the receptors start to downregulate. And it's at this point that the antidepressant effects kick in because 5-HT2A and 2C act as direct breaks on dopamine. So even though on the SSRI we're getting increased activation from an increased um, level of transmitter, you've not really got many receptors there to, to, to work on. And the longer term you take it, the more down regulation you'll get so it's um, that is what I postulate to be to be the, the cause of the antidepressant action. So there we are, and, and I forgot to say that here, and, and this is extremely important for a huge subsection of people with discontinuation syndrome, which will be a whole other range of videos, uh, is the 5-HT1A autoreceptor. And people who have PSSD, and people who have severe emotional anesthesia. Um, this is a, a long-held theory, not mine, but certainly one I support, uh, that there is a down-regulation of presynaptic autoreceptors, which, is, um, which may or may not upregulate in the correct location. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to sign off here uh, before we go into the next bit because I'm running out of time.